start with the ideas invoke the presence of the spirit the guidance of the atma if you feel that the atma is guiding you towards a guide that you revere or actually may even be unknown to you then request the help in the process maybe form maybe formless maybe any sage or saints maybe any aspect of god that we revere you just feel that presence is with you in your heart and this is a very beautiful part of this i know the mind may resist this very strongly but trust me on this in the discipleship then guided by the holy guy in the light of the atma itself then your divine classroom is taking place in your heart in your heart temple your communion your communion your communicating with the attempt to behold the presence of god and to be held by him then end the process with gratitude thank you with no judgment about what happened whether the mind was too active and you found it very difficult or it was so blissful and or you were in a deep samadhi and you left the world and the outcome is not important it is the gratitude which is important be grateful for this opportunity that god has created for you to be closer to him to meet him in this way and then end with a few rounds of the prayer the atma darshan samadhi prayer so the breaths can act like the connecting fiber between both the realms the inner and the outer so you use it to go within and you use it as a bridge to come out as well then you just uh, make a note if something is coming up even if you feel like there's nothing you see if there's something that spills out of you as you pick up your pen and paper that is contemplative prayer you are talking about advaita sadhana all of these things are the same where you are guided by the atma within and you can do this by yourself while reading a book if you are reading something which really is taking you deeper 
then use this process of contemplation to really get a deep sense of what is being shared. So let's continue with the Ashtavaka for a while and then we can use the same process to contemplate the words of the sages from the Ashtavakra. So we start with chapter 3. The sage Ashtavakra says, Having known yourself as really indestructible and one, how is it that you, knower of the self and serene, feel attached to the acquisition of wealth. Right? So what's happening? It's a rare scripture where King Janaka became enlightened just with the first Upadesha. But like any good master, Ashtavakra is not going to leave him at that. He's going to prod, he's going to push, he's going to test. So now this is the test that Ashtavata is giving. So he's saying, basically he's saying, why are you a king? Why are you a king now? You have known yourself as the really indestructible and the one. How is it that you knower of the self and now fully serene feel attached to the acquisition of wealth? Then he says, alas, as, as greed arises from the illusion of silver caused by the ignorance of the mother of pearl. So we can, we think that in the mother of pearl there is silver because of our ignorance, it looks like silver. So we believe that that is silver and valuable. Even so arises attachment to the objects of illusory perception because of the ignorance of the self. When we are caught in ignorance and not self-knowledge, then we want to grasp on to these worldly things. Having known yourself to be that in which the universe appears like waves on the sea, why do you run about like a miserable being? You are that in which the entire universe appears. It is superimposed. Then why are you gasping for this and that? Running around here and there every day. The sage is prodding him. So the attachment to wealth, the attachment to worldly security, material wealth versus spiritual wealth. Then he says, after hearing oneself to be pure consciousness and surpassingly beautiful, how can one yet be deeply attached to sense objects and thus become impure? It is strange that the sense of ownership should still continue in the wise one who has realized the self in all and all in the self. It is strange that the one abiding in the supreme non-duality and intent on liberation should yet be subject to lust 
and weakened by the practice of amorous pastimes. Because kings, especially in those days, were famous for all of these kingly pastimes, which are not so good for the heart. It is strange that knowing lust to be an enemy of knowledge, a man who has grown extremely weak and reached his last days should yet be eager for sensual enjoyment. It is strange that one who is unattached to the objects of this world and the next, who discriminates the eternal from the transient and who longs for emancipation, should yet fear dissolution of the body. See, so he's talking about all the main things we speak of in satsang, wealth, material wealth, then attachment to worldly things, relationships, lust, pleasure, and a fear of death, a fear of losing this body. Fated and feasted or tormented, the serene person ever sees the absolute self and thus is neither gratified nor angry. See? So whether he's getting great acclaim in the world, or is looked down upon, insulted all the time, the wise one remains empty of these and does not take either to heart. They are not disturbed by praise or blame. So what you could do is you could take the topic which most pushes your buttons, whether it is material wealth that prevents you from staying with him in your heart. So whether it is material wealth or its relationship or its sense pleasures or its fear of death or it is an uh, inability to handle insults or to start or propensity to start flying high when being praised, whatever is your main button. You can frame your questions, you can make your prayers and let's spend a few minutes in contemplating that, praying on that so that you are free from these afflictions. So take a few minutes and frame your requests or your questions and then we can start your contemplation. If it is something like lust, which can seem um, like such a like it has such a stranglehold over you, then just offer it to God. You will see the miracles that He can do, how free He will make you by just surrendering it to God, offering it to God. And the same for wealth, praise, any sort of desire. And the time that we are spending in satsang like this um, and hopefully forever is uh, you can count that against your prayer quota because <laughs> it is very focused prayer.
also remember that if you fall into the prayer of the quiet or you come into the no mind or you notice that your heart continues to chant the abs prayer your japa becomes a japa then don't fight that allow that to unfold allow the spirit to guide you the atma to bless the process and to guide you it does not have to follow the agenda that we are setting it does not have to answer the questions that we are asking it may bring us it may reveal very different things to us in the process so we have to be a part of the process like beginners like children in the discipleship of the atma it is the one setting the curriculum all the contemplations that we are suggesting is just so that we bring ourselves to that innocence to be guided by him but don't use that don't allow that to become an excuse for the mind to do whatever it wants right the mind will say i don't want to contemplate i just want to do this so don't fall into that trap make sure that you're being guided from a deeper place by a deeper guide So as we contemplate the nature of attachment, if you can't find what you are attached to, then find out what makes you angry. What are you scared of losing? So the fear, anger, all these symptoms are of attachment.
sometimes you will see things you will not be able to tell whether it's imagination or visions welcome them don't uh, be averse to them but don't attach to anything allow them to take you deeper into your heart like if uh, the atma sends you to uh, the presence of a holy guy and it seems like their form is revealing itself that's fine don't resist that process but don't get caught up or attached Okay, let's read a bit more and then see where it goes. <clears throat> Realizing this universe as mere illusion and losing all curiosity, how can one of steady mind yet fear the approach of death? And curiosity in the sense is that this constant need to understand what is this, why is this, this kind of stuff. With whom can we compare the great souled one who is content with self knowledge and does not hanker even after liberation? Why should that steady minded one who knows the object of perception? To be in its very nature nothing, consider one thing acceptable and another thing an unacceptable. Which means that once you see that there is no snake, it is a rope, then to say, oh, but I'd prefer it to be a rattlesnake and why is it a cobra? You know, those, are, those are meaningless um, conversations, meaningless fruitless thinking. So we must let go of all of this. He who has given up worldly attachment from this mind, who is beyond the pairs of opposites and who is free from desire, to him no experience coming as a matter of course causes either pain or pleasure. So free from the duality of the world, we are free from the mental, emotional pain and emotional desire. So the fundamental question in this in these contemplations is what is seeming real to you right now? 
is the self real is god real or is the world real and if the world is seeming very real and tangible substantial then all our talk is of god is only lip service is it is like talking about a fictional character we can all uh, maybe because it's popular in a sangha to speak like that we can all speak of god being this god being that but it's it's going to be like a work of fiction because both cannot seem real at the same time and when i say world i'm talking about maya which is me aya which means that the me comes when we see the world through the lens of the me not the mere appearance of this light and sound which is happening within consciousness itself <coughs> but the play of maya itself where the me is the central character the central one in the narrative if that narrative if that story the play of the world the leela in this way is seeming very real and god is seeming less real or not not at all actually then you are stuck in the wrong place no matter what ideas or beliefs you may have about yourself So there are two questions. Is there any process to overcome lust and related desires? We just spoke about that. I'll answer again. Second is, Father, I am sorry. I am a bit tired. How do I look at the mother identity? Please. Okay. So the answer may be the same for both. So as much as we can in this contemplative prayer process in our day-to-day -day life. try to offer everything to god make everything belong to god himself everything that appears offer it as a holy offering to god to his holy presence in your heart otherwise uh, this sort of mental lust not even a, like a bodily thing but just the minds it becomes an affliction in the mind and then distracts you so much from the holiness of your heart i remember many years ago i took a much older friend maybe in his um, late 60s or early 70s uh, they wanted to uh, husband and wife couple wanted to visit tiruvannamalai and i took them there uh, the wife and uh, this man confided in me he said that on the first day it was so good because i went so deep within myself but on the second day i saw this beautiful a uh, western woman and uh, since then i'm just so lost in just thinking about her obsessing about her so he actually independent of age because he was a um, much older man this can be such a major distraction away from god and he knew that nothing is possible nothing will happen uh, he was not at the age to act on any of these impulses but uh, just it spoiled his whole visit to such a holy place so it's very important for us to be free from the strangle hold of these forces and to offer them to god to 
offer everything that afflicts us to God in our heart and to request his help to make it right. Everything, everything can be offered to God. The beauty of constructing this heart temple is that it becomes your refuge for everything that Maya afflicts on you. Bodily, mentally, emotionally, everything. So every attempt to turn inwards, every attempt to behold him and to be held by him helps you in your deepening your construction of your heart temple, then it becomes a natural refuge for you to turn. Otherwise, in our lives we, we feel so helpless. <coughs> Because we have removed the main character from our story. We made the story about me by deleting the main one, which is God. So the beauty of prayer is that it itself reveals what we need to pray for. Okay? So for a while coming into spirituality feels like I was better off with the before coming. All of this seemed fine to me. Yeah? Now I'm here, now there's a problem with this also, and this also, and this also. Then what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to live? You see, these kind of resistances can come. But uh, remember that this is a complete overwrite of the older operating system. And it's a complete transformation of our life. And most things that we took to be true are upside down. You see? So, it is very natural many times for it to feel difficult. You can hear better or no? It's muted, yes, yeah. I see. So I am hoping that it's clear to me that the way Grace is building up our curriculum, like how the EDS came and then satsang became more contemplative, now it's, become, it's coming together as contemplative prayer and remaining more and more in the presence. I am seeing the curriculum of the Atma play out. And I hope that today's satsang will give you a major tool as to how to be in our life. You see? Where we spent a lot of time, most of our life on fruitless thinking. You see? Instead of that, you don't have to throw away the questions. You can bring them into your contemplation, into your prayer. And so much holiness will be spread in your life and in the lives of those around you in the process. And the focus will become so much clearer and the Atma will help you so much every step of the way. You will see.
that you're moving away from a head-centered life to a heart-centered life. And it's not just about the two, three hours in satsang every alternate day. It becomes the center of gravity for your life to remain in his presence. Yeah. Answers?